Hey guys, here is another quick review video on Reverb. Reverb is here essentially as a tool that we're going to use to simulate another acoustic space. So you can think, for example, if I walked down to the gym at Loyalist and stood in the center of the gym and clapped my hands together, that one sound travels out in sound waves and hits the wall and hits the ceiling and hits the floor and bounces off that. And as the wall bounces back, it bounces into other acoustic reflections. And this complex process is what we hear as reverb. We hear it as a difference between a small space and a big space. And we're going to use that reverb to simulate the fact that our music or our voice is in a different acoustic space than what the rest of the commercial is in. So the announcer probably wouldn't have reverb, but if we had two people in a conversation in a store or a library or in a gym, we'd want to make that sound different so it, it sounds more realistic to the listener. So all reverb can be found in the effects menu of Audition under its own category, Reverb. And we'll get this out of the way first off. Surround reverb, we're never going to use it. Why? Because this is what you use in, in video production for a DVD. So it has low frequency effects or the subwoofer, left channel, right channel, center channel for dialogue, left surround and right surround. So if you're ever doing something in 5.1, this is what you would do it with. And you're dealing with a bunch of stuff that's never going to apply to radio. So we never, ever use surround sound reverb. That leaves us with four other choices. Convolution reverb, full reverb, reverb, and studio reverb. What's the difference, you say? From the top to the bottom, they basically use more and more computing power. So if you're dealing with a brand new, super fast computer with lots of memory, you can use convolution reverb. And what convolution reverb is, is scientists go out and record actual acoustic spaces. So you know when I said you go to the gym at Loyalist and clap your hands? That's called an impulse. And an impulse is a very short kind of one or two cycle wave. And it records the sound of the room to simulate it. So if I look at convolution reverb, it's going to have a category called impulses. So they have found several different acoustic spaces, locker room, spiral staircase, a hall, inside a car, and, and done that. They've done the impulse for that. So if I had down the hall, it would have a whole series of presets associated with it. And with reverb, presets are a great place to start. And what you're looking at here is just how you then can control those presets. So mix, zero is zero reverb. So this is the wet output level. 100% is 100% reverb. So you'd probably want it somewhere between the 60 and 80 point to get lots of direct sound and then just a little bit of reverb. Room size. Do you want the room size to be 100%, meaning it's very large, or down towards 20%, meaning it's very small? Damping low frequency. Different rooms sound differently based on what's in them. If you have a room full of furniture, old fluffy couches, and bookcases full of books, that's going to absorb a lot more sound than if it's an empty room with hard surfaces everywhere, a hard walls, hard floors. That's going to let the sound bounce around a little more, and it's going to make the reverb much more dense. Pre-delay, that goes with room size as well. Pre-delay means how long before the first reflections get back to the source. So a long pre-delay time is going to say this room is gargantuan because it took sound 100 milliseconds, as you can see here, to travel to the other wall and back again before we heard any, any sound. Width goes to the stereo aspect of reverb. So if we want it very narrow, and unrealistic, we'd have it closer to zero. If we want it super wide to emphasize the size of the reverb, we could go up to 300%. And then gain, 
that's how reverb will affect the gain of our file. Sometimes we have to increase it, sometimes we have to decrease it. It's a little bit like makeup gain or the gain range in uh, an EQ setting. Now you'll notice with this, as soon as I make any changes on my reverb settings, you see how it flashes loading next to the hall impulse there. That's because there is so much math involved in reverb. The computer has to do a lot to keep up. So this is a really complex sounding reverb that requires a lot of math in your computer. So if you have a, a session loaded in Audition that has a bunch of things in it, like 30 or 40 files, and you start putting in the convolution reverb, it's going to take a while for things to start happening and it may kind of lock up and slow down your computer. So convolution reverb is not recommended for use in multi-track. It's recommended for use here in waveform view so we can make the changes we want. Convolution reverb theoretically is going to sound the most accurate of all the reverbs just because there's so much processing power involved in it. Will you get great sounds here? Absolutely. Is it a little bit more complex to use? Absolutely. So if you want inside the shower, right, if this is what you're writing for, you can tell that this is really going to give you a very accurate sound on what it's supposed to be. The next reverb we have to play with is full reverb. And this is back in the older versions of the program. This is as far advanced as reverb got. And you can see it really breaks things down a little bit more. So it gives you a separate dry output, which is your original signal level. It gives you a separate level for reverberation or the reverb sound and a separate level for early reflection. So you can mix this sound much more creatively. Okay. And gets into all kinds of controls here. So decay time, that gets into the size of the room. Pre-delay, like before, that gets into the early reflections and how far the sound has to travel before it hits a hard surface and bounces back. Diffusion gets into what's contained in the room. So if it has carpets instead of a hard floor, a hard floor will reflect the sound much more. And then the perception, is it more absorbent or more reflective? So you can get really super precise in stuff. So look at here when we're talking about size of the room. You know, 15, 14 meters by 30 by 22. That's a really big room, right? That's like half a gym. And as we go down to a smaller reverb, smaller room size here, you can see that we can make quite small rooms, two meters by three by four, which is, you know, half of a quarter of a garden shed. So it gets into room size. How big do you want this room to be? Do you want it to be like a stadium that seats hundreds of thousands of people? So for, uh, 57 meters, that's you know, 150 feet wide or 160 feet wide change the dimension in terms of the scale so we can make it long and narrow. Uh, we can say, are we going to have the sound happening in the left side or the right side? High pass cutoff, again, if it's a room with softer surfaces, it's not going to reflect those higher frequencies, so it's going to get absorbed. Coloration, so this looks like a fancy EQ and that's exactly what it is. So I can move these frequencies around so the high frequencies roll off more or more of the bass frequencies stay in the reverb. The next one we have to re play with is just called regular reverb. Just reverb, reverb. And you can see it simplifies it a little bit. It takes away that big mixer window that was off to the side. It doesn't give you coloration. It doesn't necessarily give you room sizes of stuff. It gives you decay time and pre-delay time, whether the sound's going to be more absorbent or more reflective. The one thing this does is give you separate controls of your wet level for your reverb and your dry level for your original signal. So this one's a good one to use. I really like some of, of this, the presets on this one. Uh, it's a good starting place. 
However, the one reverb I actually use the most in Audition is the bottom one, the cheap one called Studio Reverb. And this balances out, I find, sound quality and processing power. This takes the least of all the reverbs in your computer. It's the easiest on your computer. The changes you make will happen almost instantly. And it doesn't get overly complex in the controls it offers you. As I said, the presets are a great place to start here. So if you're having a conversation set in a room, Room Ambience 1 and 2 is a great place to start. If you want to set it in a slightly bigger place, you could have it is in a small vocal reverb. If you want it to be in a large space like a cathedral or a gym, it's right here, vocal reverb large. And it has some really interesting ones like outside the club. And this sounds like if you go past a club where music is happening, this is exactly what it sounds like from outside the building. And then you would crossfade into the music inside the building without the reverb. So what do these actually do? What do these actually sound like? So here is the voice track I'm going to work with. I am a creator. I make mountains out of molehills, transform tiny ripples into tidal waves. I wasn't born with this special gift. It came from Photo Chalet, the slim, compact Canon 310XL movie camera. It films close-ups in bright light or low-light conditions with no extra attachments. If you aren't an exquisite creator like myself, but you know someone who is, go to the Photo Chalet at 725 Hargrave Street and find your special gift. Picasso had his paintbrush, Beethoven a piano. I have my Canon 310XL movie camera. So let's say that's the basis for a conversation we're going to have in our commercial. So I would always want to put that in a different space. So we'll go to Studio Reverb and we'll go to some of my favorite presets, just Room Ambience. Now, whenever I'm dealing with reverb, because I'm dealing with voice parts, I want to be sure I hear my dry level always put to 100% or just below 100% if it's really going to affect my levels. If I start having too high of a wet level. I am a creator. I make mountains out of molehills. That sounds like an awfully big room. There's a lot of stuff not in there and it doesn't sound realistic. So typically when I'm setting up a room atmosphere, it's much more closer to 20% for wet level. Transform tiny ripples into tidal waves. I wasn't born with this special gift. It came from Photo Chalet. So you can see just a little bit of reverb changes it from dry studio atmosphere to something that sounds a little bit more casual, like it would be happening in somebody's living room. And we can take that and put this voice in a much larger space, right? So if we put this voice in a much larger space, I am a creator. I make mountains out of molehills, transform tiny ripples into tidal waves. I wasn't born with this special gift. It came from Photo Chalet, the slim, compact Canon 310XL movie camera. So that sounds like she's in an empty warehouse. Large room size. Doesn't get any larger than that. In terms of early reflections, it takes a while for stuff to happen. So if I play that it some films more, close-ups in bright light or low light up conditions more. with no extra attachments. If you aren't an exquisite creator, you can hear that almost becomes like an echo, right? So let's break that back down where it was supposed to be. So low frequency and high frequency cut, damping and diffusion. We want some more damping in there. So we want it to be a less reflective room. It's going to cut the higher frequencies more because it's going to have more stuff in the room to absorb the sound. I am a creator. I make mountains out of molehills, transform tiny ripples into tidal waves. I wasn't born with this special gift. So you can still get the feeling of space. It's just not so harsh and unfriendly and cold, damp, empty room. By taking away some of the high frequencies and adding more damping and taking off some of the diffusion, the room still seems big, but suddenly it seems warmer. And all we're doing is having different sound stages for stuff. So that's the studio reverb, the, the cheap and easy reverb. 
when you start getting into the more complex ones, you're starting to create different sizes and more importantly, more realistic acoustic spaces. So where is this conversation happening? Is it happening uh, inside a car? I am a creator. I make mountains out of mold. Whoops. See, my gain level is way too high there. Hills transform tiny ripples into tidal waves. I wasn't born with this special gift. It came from Photo Chalet, the slim, compact Canon 310XL. So that sounds like the inside of a very small car. Do you want that sound? Is that exactly where this conversation is happening? What if it's happening? The singularity. I have no idea what this is. Very sci-fi, right? So you just start going around and looking to see what the presets tell you. So public access television. Like myself, but you know someone who is. Go to the photo chalet at 725 Hargrave Street and find your special gift. So that gives you the sound of, again, a very tiny little voiceover booth. And you can play with all the presets and have multiple things that you're going to find that are really cool. And it's just finding the way to use them. And Full Reverb, again, was going to have some great presets. So small club. Picasso had his paintbrush, Beethoven a piano, I have my Canon 310XL movie camera. So again, smaller space, but again, very reflective. I am a creator. I make mountains so let's out play of molehills, transform make tiny sure ripples dry levels into up tidal a bit more. waves. I wasn't born with this special gift. It came from Photo Chalet, Take some of the, the slim, away. compact Canon 3. And you'll notice when you're playing a lot of these more uh, complex reverbs, they don't let you adjust any of the adjustments on the fly like you can in the studio reverb. If I go to studio reverb, I can make changes as I go. So I can make changes to this. I'm a creator. I make mountains I out of molehills. Transform tiny ripples into tidal Output waves. levels. I wasn't born with I this special gift. The it came time. from Photo Chalet. The slim, can compact Canon 310XL movie camera. Take away it some films close-ups in bright light or low-light conditions with no extra attachments. If you aren't an exquisite creator. So I can adjust my reverb on the fly i can fine tune it to get the exact sound i want and i find that to be a very effective feature of studio reverb with the other reverbs you do not get that capability so every time you want to change something you have to stop make your adjustment play again stop adjust play again so full reverb again like myself, none of but this you know I can adjust. I can only go to the adjust photo chalet at 725 Hargrave Street and find your special gift. Picasso had his paintbrush, Beethoven, reflections. A I, I, can, I can only play with the basic mixer settings. If I go to reverb, reverb, just the regular one, and I'll pick oh, megaphone. This is a great one. Creator, I make mountains out of molehills, transform yeah. tiny ripples I can't into adjust tidal the characteristics. waves. I wasn't born with this special gift. It came from Photo Chalet, the slim, adjust. compact Canon 310XL movie camera. It films close-ups in bright light or low-light conditions. I can only adjust my output levels. Okay, so there's a different room ambience here. So there's three rooms you have to play with. Bigger room ambience is a, is a fourth. Depressing karaoke bar. I am a creator. I make mountains out of molehills, transform tiny ripples into tidal waves. So it's an interesting acoustic space that nobody's there. So that's why they call it depressing karaoke bar. Now, a lot of what you do with reverb is the same as what happens with delay effects. So if I want to put reverb only on this part of my voice track, just that first line. I am a creator. I make mountains out of molehills, transform tiny ripples into tidal waves. If I want to do that, I have to make sure that I leave space for my reverb to tail through. In previous versions of the program, it would do that automatically, but in this one, not so much. So if I go to reverb, in this case, I will go to Reverb and I will pick a depressing karaoke bar preset. 
I'm going to have my dry level at 100 and bring the wet level up just slightly. Uh, perception I want to be slightly more reflective. So when I press apply this is going to apply reverb with a delay time of 200 milliseconds. Let's bring that up to a full second. So for every second it's going to send reverb out after it which is fine until we get to about this part right here. All of a sudden this part of the reverb doesn't have room to naturally finish. So let me apply that. So you see the level change there, so I have to adjust for levels. I am a creator. I make mountains out of molehills, transform tiny ripples into tidal waves. I wasn't born with this special gift. So what you need there is that reverb is supposed to go through and finish and tail out and kind of echo off. And if I try and do it in the wrong spot, it's going to sound guillotined off. And I'm, believe me, I'm really going to notice it. So again, just like delay, if you're going to put delay in, you have to go to edit and insert silence. So now you can see the end of that, how it ends normally like that. Now when I apply that same reverb effect and I look at the end, you'll see how there's part of the reverb that needs to carry through. So here, right at the end, you see where it ended before? Now it tails through a little bit and there's almost 700 or 800 milliseconds of extra audio that's there. That's the stuff that gets cut off and it sounds unnatural when, it, when that happens. So we don't want to do that. If you're going to apply reverb to a certain space, you have to leave space for it. Now, you may not want to do that in the middle of a voice track. So we would then have to go to multi-track and bring our voice into multi-track that way if i wanted reverb just on this part same first part i had before i can split the track split it and then move this so i can put reverb just on here through the mixer window so i can go to track one effects turn it on turn that first slot on, go to reverb. See, this is what happens. If you select a reverb, it's gonna to take too much uh, out of your computer, you're gonna get this warning signal. So now I can go to reverb, get my room ambience. Let's say I wanted room ambience with more of a 100 millis or 1000 milliseconds. And I'm gonna put my right at 100 and bring this up a little bit so now I have reverb on track one and I can go back here and only the reverb only this part here is going to have reverb on it mountains out of molehills transform tiny ripples into tidal waves I wasn't born so the reverb actually continues through in this section right here right so the it has reverb on all of this track and then when this track ends, it gives you time for your reverb to decay away. That is absolutely the way to be using reverb. And notice I can do this all in the main screen if I go to the effects uh, mode right here, because normally it shows in and out. If I go to effects, I can go through whatever effects I have on each track. So I want to make sure I have reverb on this track. Here's what happens if we put re convolution reverb on. So it's going to show me that I don't want inside of a car. Let's say I want this to be down the hall, right? How big a hall do I want this to be? A bitter hallway. So this is going to take a little bit to do processing. I am a creator. I make mountains out of molehills, transform tiny ripples into tidal waves. I wasn't born with... So there, just as, as the cursor was going under the module that reverb was tailing off so we don't want that reverb to be cut off it sounds completely unnatural and really really not professional we want to make sure that reverb has a chance to decay away naturally so reverb it's really cool use it make it sound natural though like all your conversations aren't going to happen in a studio. If they're going to happen in a store, make it sound like the store. That way, when the announcer comes in, it sounds like it's cutting to a different 
scene in the movie. So have your scene with reverb on it. Have your announcer in the studio where announcers usually are. Real people are in the store and that'll make it sound much more realistic. Reverb, it's fun to play with. Try it sometime.